Post, publisher of College of the Dead, publisher of independent comics for more than 30 years. And um, I was doing a little research, and I love research. And I came across this article uh, in ICV2. ICV2 is uh, stands for Internal Correspondence, Volume 2. And this is um, a guy named Milton Greep's website, and he used to run uh, Capital City Distributors, which went out of business owing me money. That said, uh, it, it stands for Internal Correspondence Volume 2. That was a business publication they used to do sponsored through Capital City Distribution. Um, Kickstarter's Camilla Zhang on the company's role in the comics ecosystem. So interestingly, this uh, interesting person was hired in uh, 2018 to lead their comics category at Kickstarter. Um, she's a social justice warrior. Uh, she fights for people for virtue signaling, and she was recently um, terminated. She was dropped because um, she apparently her research and her outreach was not so good. Uh, so yeah, she was laid off. So um, this article though is interesting because it kind of gives you an insight into when she was getting away, away with murder and just taking these huge paychecks for Kickstarter promoting her politics and her weird identity uh, ideologies. Um, this is what she was actually doing. So these, these are pretty straightforward people, at least the way they do um, business articles related to comic books. This is by uh, Rob Salkowitz, and he interviewed her, Kickstarter's Comics Outreach Lead. Now, I've been in business a while, and what you do with an outreach person is you they're business development people you know they bring in business opportunities so sometimes you know when you're in business a business opportunity doesn't come to you just by answering the phone saying hi how are you or responding to an email where someone says hey can i do business with you and then you respond back and say yes you what you do is you you know business outreach business development people like what camilla was supposed to be doing um is something where your responsibility is you reach out to industry players and you try to bring, bring people onto your platform. Kickstarter was number one for comics. Kickstarter was kind of the platform you would think of for comics before Comicscape, before Ethan Van Skyver and uh, Richard C. Meyer came along and started doing things like this, this $861,000 campaign, which is just one of Ethan's cyber frog campaigns for the year so far this uh, reprint campaign uh, and with a couple of posters or whatnot and some new material uh, did $178,000 and is still going strong. So Ethan's already doing more than a million dollars in retail cyber frog sales just for this year. That said, so what was Camilla actually doing? You know, she, she's supposed to be reached. Did she reach out to Diamond, comic distributors, who has their own problems, but was she making some kind of a deal with Diamond saying, hey, why don't we bring our crowdfunded comics to Diamond? Here's how we could work together. Let's sit down and figure it out. Look how blue my hair is. Check out my necklace. Like, was she doing that? Uh, was she working with printers or fulfillment companies that could have helped uh, get comics out to people when they were ordered? You know, was she uh, trying to encourage major publishers to do Kickstarter comic book versions of some of their popular selling fiction titles like Harry Potter or something like that? Um, was she even reaching out to independent comic book publishers or major publishers like Marvel, DC? Um, I'll throw Dynamite in there. Dynamite, why not? You know, 
Was she asking any of them, hey, why don't you give us an exclusive um, Spider-Man title? Let's work together to promote it because that's very commercial. Because, you know, that's what you do in your business development. You you seek out these business opportunities. Did she reach out to me and say, hey, I see that you did College of the Dead uh, book one. It did $5,300 on, um, on uh, Indiegogo. Why don't you bring it to Kickstarter? It would just be extra money. Did she, did she bother to do that? Did she bother to contact Ethan Van Skyver and say, you know, I see you did a million last year on um, Kickstarter. Why don't you, on Indiegogo, why don't you come over to Kickstarter with your project and offer a slightly different version of it or, or do like, you know, encourage more Billy Tucci type of things where you offer it on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. No, 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 no. She no didn't contact any of us. But this is what she was doing. And th this is what I found kind of um, a little funny and interesting. So um, Rob at, Rob says, uh, Kickstarter's had a major role in comic publishing over the past 10 years. Okay, it was true. Uh, how would you assess the impact from the company's perspective? Zhang says, it's been increasing year by year. We've seen incredible growth in the comics category uh, year after year. Uh, 2018 saw almost 1,500 successful campaigns. 2019, almost 1,600. Now, that actually is not a lot of growth, if you look at it, right? When she came in at 2018, so the fact that they did like 100 more projects, and how much money do you think they made off those 100 projects? You know, they weren't all, um, you know, million-dollar campaigns or, or even $26,000 campaigns. Most of their campaigns raised less than $10,000. Not all, but most of them do. Now she claims here that they have 768,000 backers in the comics category. They're close to $100 million all-time raised. This article, by the way, was just in January. I was When I first came across it, I was like, well, maybe this is like two years old or something. Like, no, 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 no. This is pretty damn current. It's just a couple months ago. This was January. So 768,000 backers. Now she doesn't say if they're unique backers. I guarantee you they're not. There's no way that almost a million individuals... Uh, with no repetition have back Kickstarter projects. Not even possible. Um, now, weirdly, um, she references here that she knows that North American comics is a billion dollar market. Uh, and $16 million doesn't seem like a lot. But when you think about how many projects are getting recognition behind that 16 million, that speaks for itself. Well, uh, I mean, being able to communicate about numbers is important when you're in business development. So it's, it's probably quite lucky for them that they got rid of this dumb dumb. Um, but what she's, I think, trying to convey is that Kickstarter did $16 million in the entire comics category last year. In two, in its first two years, Comicsgate Books, which is not even all of Indiegogo, Indiegogo is additional, uh, has additional projects that are not Comicsgate. But um, Comicsgate Books did $5 million in the first two years um, of publishing Comicsgate Books. And this year, uh, Comicsgate Books have done, and we haven't even had our big, biggest projects out yet, we've done um, 2.2 million plus. Uh, you know, and half of that, I guess, is Ethan Van Skyver at this point. But still, we've done some pretty massive numbers comparing to, like, look at all of Kickstarter for the, all of Kickstarter's comics is $16 million for the year. And their growth is, is maybe 10%. It's not even 10%. 100 projects, it's less than 10% is their growth. Uh, all right. So then Rob says, I'm sure a lot of small publishers would be very happy with $16 million. What do you need to keep that momentum going? Now, that's a business question. That's a sensible question. So you would think she would have a business answer that would say like, well, I need to do better with my outreach. I need to bring in some higher dollar projects. I need to make sure that our uh, backer, our uh Project creators are shipping to backers on time. We're going to help them do that. So here's what she says. To ensure a healthy ecosystem, we want to raise more awareness among comics readers about the breadth and depth of Kickstarter projects. For example, readers from diverse backgrounds don't always see themselves in stories. Same with creators. Well, that's incredibly stupid. And obviously it didn't work because they don't have year over year growth of any substantial numbers. They just don't. Why is Kickstarter so appealing for diverse creators and their fans? Well, she has no idea, right? She's going to make wild guesses. Uh, she's going to say maybe they've been rejected by publishers who can be short-sighted. Maybe they hear stuff like, 
we already have uh, our diverse book for the year. We already have a Haitian character. And here's how you know she's got problems. And what a mistake to hire her. When I was pitching my own graphic novel to a publisher, I got a very nice rejection saying they already had a genderqueer shapeshifter. It's not a zero-sum game. There are all kinds of stories that want to be told. Okay, so you know what? If you have genderqueer shapeshifters at your comic book publisher, one is enough. Perhaps one is more than enough, just so you know. All right, so you got it covered. Um, and here she goes. Big troubles for big publishers think diversity is a market trend. It isn't a checkbox. It shouldn't be seen that way. I think marginalized creators come to Kickstarter to have complete autonomy over their projects. Uh, okay, so she's made it personally her mission to uplift projects by marginalized creators. Well, it's good that her mission is not to actually do outreach and business development for Kickstarter because they've been able to get rid of her now and perhaps they'll have a future. Uh, as a platform because Kickstarter before she came along was where it was at. Then they rejected your boy Zach uh, and blew off a couple of other comics gate creators or recently former comics gate creators like Mike Miller. And now the energy is all with Indiegogo. All the passions within Indiegogo, all the numbers are with Indiegogo. So um, yeah, then, then she basically spouts this other communist nonsense of I pers okay, she wants to give people the chance to really be allies, to step up and support marginalized creators. Like, no, you're producing content. It's supposed to be entertaining content. It's not an opportunity to support marginalized anything. It's not charity. It's not supposed to be a charity. It's supposed to be you're producing a passion project and you've caught people's interest with that. It's not supposed to be a GoFundMe. It's supposed to be a platform for generating passionate uh, content. That's supposed to be enjoyable and something you can read and want and want to see more of. Uh, Rob asks, how important is the comic segment to Kickstarter as a percentage of projects run through the site? Um, okay. So they did 105.88 million, million. So 105 million pledged throughout the year, including projects that didn't fund, which means it's less than $100 million all to date that they've sold through Kickstarter, which is kind of amazing because... Literally this year, Ethan Van Skyver sold a million dollars worth of Cyberfrog so far this year. That's not even all the Cyberfrog he sold before. He did a million last year and, and other numbers that I'm not fully aware of. So uh, how quickly will it be before Comicsgate completely eclipses Kickstarter? Because they have no growth and they have no direction. They're not even trying to bring in projects that generate money. How has comics been trending over the past few years? Uh, is it still a growth area or holding steady? It's definitely a fast growing category. What makes it stand out is a high success rate. One of the highest, 58.56%. So they're looking at, a, they're looking at how do you establish growth? Well, which of our projects didn't completely fail? Well, almost half of them, more than half didn't fail, meaning not get funded. No, growth would be revenue. And it's not high growth for Kickstarter. It's collapsing. In fact, they've laid off 40% of all their employees, including this incompetent person. Um, and Indiegogo apparently is not having any layoffs. Maybe it's because we're bringing them so much volume with Comicscape. Um, all right. I mean, it just kind of goes on uh, like this. There's not a lot more to see. I'll put a link to this in the description. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> just as an example of how silly this is she he, he asks her like a very direct business question that she should know because as part of an outreach person one of the things you want to make sure is that you're bringing responsible creators to the platform not just that they're the right gender or the right color person so he asks her how about projects that fund but don't get fulfilled do you have any stats on that what are the safeguards and she goes uh, well, I think we do have numbers on that, but not immediately available. In terms of commitments, the community is so engaged, we look out for each other. There are people who try to get around the rules, but it gets out. For better or worse, the comics community is a small world that travels fast. So she, she doesn't know what's going on, which is fine because she doesn't work there anymore. Not gonna, not gonna, not gonna work here anymore. Uh well, wherever she sees Kickstarter going uh, over the next decade is kind of irrelevant because she doesn't work there anymore. 
All right, so that's that article. Uh, there's another article here talking about her getting kicked out. Um, and there's this nasty little comment uh, by, um, what is her name again? Heidi McDonald, who's obsessed with trying to block the success of Indiegogo and pretend it doesn't exist. Uh, and she speaks about, uh, however, while Kickstarter is extremely transparent about their numbers, comics campaigns have raised 111 million um, 0.6 million on the platform. Indiegogo is extremely non-transparent, which by the way, that is not true. That is her delusion. Um, she doesn't describe what she means about non-transparent. The fact that Indiegogo uh, kick, this is what she's describing as uh, extremely transparent. That Kickstarter has stats of how much they've raised through the platform and how much they've raised through different uh, successfully funded projects. Okay, but it doesn't mean that Indiegogo is not transparent. That's how much I raised to the penny on Indiegogo. This is how much Ethan raised to the penny on Indiegogo. You can search any project you want to search. Any. All the numbers are there. It's completely black and white. Speaking of not transparent, uh, this Heidi McDonald woman does a whole article about how, crowd, how comics crowdfunding is doing during the pandemic and only mentions Kickstarter, doesn't reference... Indiegogo whatsoever doesn't even explain that she's not mentioning Indiegogo, even though there are millions of dollars going through Indiegogo and it's got a lot more momentum than Kickstarter is ever going to have again because of Comics Gate. Uh, but she doesn't even explain like, well, I'm not mentioning Indiegogo because um, I want to pretend they don't exist. She's not even mentioning them uh, and saying, well, I feel that they're not transparent enough and here's why she can't manage to do that. No offense uh, to Heidi McDonald, it's just this is nonsensical. It's nonsensical to pretend uh, that Indiegogo doesn't exist. It's nonsensical to say that they are non-transparent when you're not even mentioning that they exist. That's not a lot of transparency on your side either, Heidi. All right, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me any comments on what you think of this uh, below. Do you think they made the right move getting rid of this business development person that developed like zero business but just pursued her bizarre ideologies? Um, let me know what you think, what you would have done had you been in uh, the position of a Kickstarter management. Would you have kept this blue-haired person around? I hope not. I would never have. I wouldn't have kept her around this, around this long. I would have had measurable goals, and not her, uh, measurable goals are not her feelings or her necklace or her hair color. Um, but again, subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, leave me any comments below. I will see you again soon with another video, and if I don't see you, I will miss you.